Hey fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. We were talking about exact differential equations in the last time, okay? And I was giving you an example of indeed an inexact differential equation. But today we are going to go kind of overboard. It's one of those um, situations where it actually does make sense to solve a partial differential equation and where it's kind of easy to solve a partial differential equation when finding an integrating factor. So what we did before, we have found five forms of integrating factors, which are kind of common, okay? And we were working with them. But what about a situation where our age, our integrating factor is just a multivariable function? How should we deal with something like this? Because if you remember correctly, in a normal case, we were saying that, well, now if we use an integrating factor, this equation right here actually holds, okay? Where p is nothing but this and q is one plus x squared. But we always place some restrictions on h. For example, h has the function with respect to x or y, so such that those differentials at some point vanish. Yeah, this is something we did before, okay? But now we want to treat h as just a multivariable function we don't know anything about. So at first, let's write this right here out. We are going to have, okay, um, this is just a simple product rule this time, meaning h times del y of p, del y of p is just this function differentiate with respect to y, meaning it's giving us x. And then plus p, which is nothing but x times y, del y of our h. Like I said, we don't know anything about h, is equal to h times del xq, which is nothing but two times x, plus q, so one plus x squared, del, a, del x of h. Sorry, have to think about everything I do right here. <laughs> Don't want to do any mistakes, my boys and girls out there. Now, we are stuck. <laughs> what should we do now? Well, I wouldn't make this video if I didn't know what to do next, okay? This is one of the occasions where I just thought to myself, hey, let's solve a partial differential equation using the simplest way possible we have already talked about. And it did work out. It did work out so wonderfully. We are going to do separation of variables. Meaning, we are going to say that our h of x comma y is just the product of two functions, okay? Maybe you have seen this before. So for example, if we have u of x times v of y, okay? We have done this on the Schrödinger equation, for example. We were separating the time-dependent Schrödinger equation to get ourselves the time-independent Schrödinger e equation. And we can solve this thing for many, 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 infinitely many, um, potential functions, okay? But but in, in here we are actually lucky. We can separate this so easily and it's going to work out so wonderfully, okay? Now we can plug our new definition for h into here. And I want you guys to notice u is just with respect to x and v is just with respect to y. Meaning if you, for example, have the partial differential in x, this is nothing but v times u prime, the partial differential of single variable function. And this very variable is just a simple derivative of this thing, okay? Meaning h is u times v, I'm going to put it like this, times x plus x times y, then we are differentiating in y, meaning this is u times v prime, being nothing but two times uv times x plus one plus x squared, and then del xh is v times u prime. Does this seem any better? Well, at first sight, not. But here's one really, really good thing. We want to separate both sides, meaning all that's with respect to y, we want to have there, okay? That's the y hat token. And everything that's with respect to x, we want to have on this side. Meaning, we want to treat y and x as two independent variables. Meaning, if we were to make changes to our x, on this side, for example, setting x equal to three, then well, our other side is just with respect to y, so nothing is going to change here. So that would result in an inequality, meaning both sides need to be equal. But since they are functions in normal case, you can really 
uh, really vary them, okay? Meaning both sides have to be constant. Otherwise, we would have an inequality, just like I said. It's sometimes possible, sometimes it's, it's not. If you would have a transcendent function right here, for example, the sine, it wouldn't work out so nicely, okay? But this time it does. What can we say? For example, we want to have everything with respect to y on this side. So everything that's with respect to x on this side is just u times x. It's a common factor, so why not divide by that? Why can't we do, divide by that? Well, we kind of have our unknown x. We don't want it to be equal to zero, just like with polynomials. And also, if u were equal to zero, well, then our h would be equal to zero. But that means it's not an integrating factor because we can't multiply both sides by zero. That's not something you can do in the real numbers, okay? It doesn't work. Meaning, u times x is not equal to zero. Thus, it's equivalent to v plus y times v prime being equal to. Okay, this is two times v. What you guys notice, those are kind of equal. You can cancel them out on both sides. Okay, just with a v right here. V is weird to say, to be honest. Plus, okay, we are going to have one plus x squared over, and then x, I'm going to put it like this, um, u prime over u times v. Now, we can move on. Everything is just with respect to y on this side. This is good. But on this side, we still have mixed variables. What can we do? Well, on both factors, we have our v right here, meaning we can factor it out and divide on both sides. It's not equal to zero by the same arguments as up here. Meaning this thing right here is equivalent to saying we have y times v prime being equal to, we are going to factor out our v. So one plus one plus x squared over x, u prime over u. Dividing both sides by it leaves us with this beautiful equation. And that's just with respect to y, that's just with respect to x. Our separation was successful. Meaning if we were, if we were to make changes to any of those sides, it would result in an inequality, meaning both sides need to be equal to some constant c. And this is important. But the real cool thing is, equals two is an in equivalence relation, okay? Meaning this side is equal to c and this side is equal to c. Meaning we can just solve some simple linear differential equations. We know how to do this, okay? This partial differential equation is an absolute joke for us math meanies right here on this channel. Let us deal with the first one. It's, it's a really easy one. y times v prime over v is equal to c. Now, well, how can we solve this? We have done this before. We can divide both sides by y. We don't want it to be equal to zero. Like I said, just like before with the unknown and y. And then we can integrate both sides with respect to y more formally, okay? We can cancel this out and then we can integrate both sides with respect to y. It's going to result in, okay, on this side, you can play physicist and then the dy in one over dy is going to cancel out, okay? Meaning we are going to integrate v with respect to v it's going to result in the natural log of v, so one over v with respect to v. Integrated is nothing but, um, same spiel here, c times the natural log of y. Now we can take base e on both sides. I want you guys to notice c times the natural log is just the natural log of the argument to the cth power in this case. If you use e on both sides, v is nothing but, don't forget your arbitrary constant k, so many constants, ah, oh, Papa's forgetting them, is thus nothing but, okay, y to the cth power, and then we are going to have times e to the kth power, it's yet another constant, e snack, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it e snack. Now we have found the first part of our h, okay, h is thus nothing but u, times y to the cth power e snack. u is just an unknown function. We don't know anything about this thing at the moment. So we can just absorb our e into our u, okay? It's just going to be multiplied by another constant and that's it, okay? Everything's Gucci right here. Meaning this at the moment is our h. You could plug all of this in and work through it again, but you're going to be left with this expression. This is what we are going to solve now. Our second expression is that c is nothing but 1 plus 1 plus x squared over x q prime over u. And one important thing, this c is the same one as this c. Don't call it kappa for example, okay? 
it's not going to work out in the end. This is not how it works, mate, okay? This is not how mafia works. Now, once again, we want to separate both sides. So, um, subtracting one on both sides and then multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of this thing is going to do the trick. Meaning, that's the equivalent to saying we have c minus one x over one plus x squared being equal to u prime over u. By the same arguments, we're going to integrate both sides with respect to x. This is just a constant. We can bring it to the outside by the linearity of the integral. On the right hand side, we are going to have the natural log of u plus some arbitrary constant c. We can bring it to the other side, blah, blah, blah. Not arbitrary constant c, it's an arbitrary constant kappa this time, okay? It's a different constant, mate. <laughs> Don't fuck it up. What is this on this side? Well, this is pretty easy to integrate, actually. Um, let, I don't want to use u because u is our function part right here. Let t be um, one plus x squared. So the denominator differentiating both sides leads to dt over two is nothing but x times dx. Meaning, on this side, we are going to be left with, okay, natural log of u is thus nothing but c minus one over two, and then integral of du um, dt, I'm terribly sorry, oh, I'm mixing stuff up right here, u substitution, fork off, over t. Integrating this is quite easy, that's the natural log of t, but t is nothing but one plus x squared, meaning it's going to be c minus one over two, natural log of one plus x squared. By the same arguments as before, c minus one over two, we can bring it to the inside of our natural log. And then we can take base e on both sides. Don't forget your arbitrary constant k, leaving us with, this time we have to preserve our constant in here. u, our second and last function part, is one plus x squared to the c minus one over two power times some arbitrary constant e snack. We've we done it, mate. We've done it. We have found our h, okay? Our h is thus y to the cth power. One plus x squared to the c minus one over two power e snack. This is our h, okay? Our integrating factor. Isn't that pretty fancy? And I want you guys to remember the old ones. Can I remember them? So, what did we do there? Well, uh, one integrating factor we got was this really simple one where we just said that h is just a function of y. Meaning we have to get rid of this x part right here. How can we get rid of that? Well, with this part to the zero of power. When c is equal to one, we are going to get y to the first power times e snack. I hope this does make sense to you, okay? When we just said h is with respect to y, we actually got this integrating factor and it did work out. Now, we also took a look at, uh, um, at the case where h is just with respect to x, meaning we had to get rid of our y part. Well, when c is equal to zero, then this is going to vanish and we are going to have one over square root, one plus x squared, times e snack. And this is indeed what we got the last time, okay? Those were our integrating factors we were getting out of this um, hole, calculating using restrictions. But this time, we've got the most general version of our integrating factor. And in my opinion, this is pretty cool, okay? And now you can go ahead and check for yourself if this is actually an integrating factor, meaning you have to show this right here. This part, of the inclusion is pretty easy to prove, but this part right here is a bit harder to calculate, okay? You have to do some trickery. Maybe I'm going to make an outtake video, I don't know yet. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more, buy those t-shirts I created. Also support on the channel on Patreon, click on my core question, I post from time to time, blah, blah, blah. And up until the next video, have a, um, I'm having something special for you, my boys. Have a fluty day. Ciao. <laughs>